Okay, great. Ron, thanks for letting me come on. And actually, I, I appreciate your brilliance and letting me go after Bala because this is a uh, great context for uh, how the intelligent data platform at Microsoft could be powered by Fivetran. Because uh, part of what we do, and Bala talked about the, about the new oil, and I'm going to talk about the new oil that data is as well. But uh, one of our taglines at Fivetran is that we make access to data as simple and reliable as electricity. What we mean by that is that I can walk over to the wall and I hit the switch and I expect the lights to come on. And I don't know what's going on over at the power company. And I don't know what's going on with utilities and bringing the power to my house. I don't know what's going on in the house with the wires. But I know when I walk to the to the wall, when I go to the kitchen, when I turn on the TV, I expect all these things to work. That's what our users are expecting. That's what Bala's users are expecting when they get into that intelligent data platform. And we'll walk through how Fivetran helps empower that. So uh, first things first, uh, we're going to talk through a couple of the prob business problems that you're probably running into with data. And then we'll talk about your data maturity curve and where you might be and where uh, your organization might be as far as using data. And then we'll talk about how Fivetran fits into a automated data uh, platform. So let me get going. Uh, so first, you've probably all heard this quote from back in 2006 where Clive Humby said that data is the new oil. In 2023, I kind of hate that analogy because I think of oil as, as something that's not renewable, has a lot of connotation for uh, smog and pollution. And data is none of those things. Uh, data is renewable. There's more data all the time. And data is awesome. It's so usable. So maybe it kind of sticks in that there's still a lot of uses for petroleum and oil. Uh, but a few things that we can definitely say is that, uh, that like America, we, we run on oil and as companies, we run on data. It's required in business. There's just no way around it. And without data and data practices, uh, we're not moving forward. The raw product of data is valuable in and of itself. But there are two things that make it extremely valuable. One, refining it, increasing the quality and turning it into things like plastics and uh, petroleum, uh, 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 heating oils and, and engine oils makes it even more valuable. But then even more important than that is getting it to the right place so that users of, of that oil can use it and consume it. So maybe Clive had it right after all, even in 2023. So uh, the pro the, there's a big problem though with, with uh, data. You need it, but accessing it is really hard. And a few stats that came from a survey done in February 2021 that still apply um, almost half of organizations say that key data is not usable for decision making. That's not all data, which you'd think about like, oh yeah, all data, we don't have that. But key data isn't usable for decision making. That's data that they need to make decisions. Other folks say, um, over half folks say that, that data engineers don't have enough time to extract maximum value from the data. You say, well, why not? Well, the people that are, are asking for things from data, they have vague requirements. The analysts, when they get into the data, are finding things that they didn't realize understanding, that they, they didn't understand to begin with. And the worst part about this is that these data engineers are craftsmen. They're quality people that want to do great work. And it is demoralizing and demeaning to them to not be able to deliver as they would expect and be able to get this maximum value for their users. Almost 100% of organizations say that data pipelines break frequently, and many of those say that they break at least monthly. And then because of those breaks, over 50% of organizations have said that they have delayed decisions or lost out on opportunities because of those broken pipelines and the impact of those pipelines. They can't trust data. They know they don't have the data. They miss an opportunity for good quality care, great customer service, moving forward with a business opportunity. So having, having these data pipelines that are up and running and available are so important to the business. So you may be on a data maturity curve. You're, you're probably on this call because you're doing something with data, which means that you're probably not inactive where you're doing nothing and just making your, your decisions based on best guess and assumptions, but you're probably not all the way up at it at uh, innovative where you have all of your data that's, that's uh, unsiloed. It's democratized and understood across the organization. You have it uh, documented so that uh, anybody in the organization can find the data that they need. 
you're probably working in, in uh, parts of your organization where there's reactive focus, where they're working on data within applications and just running reports to make decisions, or more proactive, where they're bringing together key data uh, components like CRM data, ERP data, financial data, things that are key to your organization and, and running analytics and have good reporting on it. And you're trying to move to more of an, an innovative data maturity curve. So this is where Fivetran really helps in getting that data so that you can bring it together and do very complex data programs with that data. Those programs could be things like centralizing data, where you're taking data from across the organization and bringing it together so that anybody in the organization has access to that key data that they need and almost any data that they need for any analytics project. You might be modernizing your infrastructure and realizing that the infrastructure that's on premise and in an appliance does, is not gonna scale for where you need to go. It is not in times like this, where we're also cost conscious and we're seeing layoffs across the board, is not gonna scale from a cost perspective going forward. You may be democratizing your data and applying an understanding across that data so that the organization can completely use it. Or you might be productizing your data where you have uh, insights based on what you've done that you're selling to outside organizations. To do any of these things, you need to, you need to apply uh, four things to it. One, you need to get it to the right spot. Secondly, you need to make sure that it's secured and only the right people have access to that data. It needs to be governed and understood, well-documented so that the or organization who's trying to use it can use it uh, correctly. And it needs to be extensible. So this data has to break those silos so that, that uh, where it needs to be, it can be, it's usable and it can scale. So as you're, as you're scaling up and bringing more data in, you're applying the movement security and governance as you go. And this is where Fivetran really starts to help. So let's talk about it from a, a uh, conceptual architecture perspective. And again, this is so great getting to talk after Bala because he laid this out for us uh, so succinctly on what's in that cloud data platform. So whether it's, it's Microsoft, Google, uh, AWS, Snowflake, Databricks, uh, your organization is likely moving forward with a cloud data warehouse or you have one right now that you're working to adopt. As part of that, you have sources. Some of these sources you have good data from and you're using in your, in your architecture already. Some of these sources you haven't been able to pull into your data warehouses in the past. And this is where Fivetran helps move that data from whatever source, whether it's an application, a file, a database, whether that data is, is in the cloud, on premise. We help move that data very securely, giving understanding of that data that you're moving and doing it in a completely no code environment so that you can go from uh, data that's unavailable to completely available in minutes. So let's talk about that because we follow an ELT methodology. First is extraction. When we talk about extraction, we're really talking about getting to those sources wherever they are and doing it very quickly and very efficiently. Quick and efficient is not developing code, but using out of the box technology so that you can put in credentials to that source. You can scale it very quickly to pull that data in and you can rely on it to be very fault tolerant when the data is moving over. So if for whatever reason the application goes down, it can be updated as soon as possible. We move data in a non-batch format. So it's from a CDC perspective. So we're only moving the data that, that has changed. So you're, you're uh, ingressing as little data as possible, but getting all of it, and you're moving it in, in, in the smallest amount possible. And we can work with on cloud data, in cloud data, on-premise data, and we can scale up to, uh, to great scale, many terabytes a day um, as you have uh, data that moves. Uh, so just a few examples of our data sources that we support, whether they're uh, marketing, finance, product, uh, but we, we support hundreds of, of sources today, and we're committed to growing by 300 more in 2023. So this list is gonna grow significantly. Next is load. And one of the most important parts of this is delivering that data. And one of the things that a lot of organizations struggle with in getting data into that data warehouse is that they've followed an ETL transformation in the past, where you had to conform the data before you loaded it into the warehouse. In today's day and age, your analysts need the data immediately. So the part of the power of what 
Bala was showing in that uh, that intelligent data platform was that you had you had data and you could apply transformations and apply business logic on the data by the analyst as they were using it. So you really need to be able to apply it into a schema that's self-healing. So as things change in source, it changes automatically in destination and that you have uh, a uh, item potency. So if something happens in the pipeline process where it's down for a while, it comes back up without having to reload all of the data or uh, have data mismatches. Fivetran supports all of this in our, in our load process. Finally, transformations. Uh, no matter what you're doing, uh, the data, while we talk about being uh, analyst ready, that doesn't mean that it's reporting ready. So there's things that you're going to have to do to bring this data together, to clean the data, to normalize the data, things that you're going to do that are very business specific to your organization. And applying those business rules to the data is where you can use things like whether it's, it's um, whatever technology that you want, SQL, Python, Spark, uh, kind of the, the technology du jour that your user, your team, and makes the best fit for your data organization, you can apply. Fivetran does have some out-of-the-box transformations to bring together some of this, this key data, uh, but, but we really rely on, on uh, uh, scripting, which is, of course, the, the uh, solution of choice for your data engineers for doing these complex transformations. So on top of this, moving the data isn't enough. You've got to have governance on top of it so that you're confirming you, you have an understanding of what's being loaded that if there is sensitive data like PII, PHI, PCI, any kind of data sensitivity, you have an understanding that, that you have it, that you're moving it, that it's encrypted in transit and at rest so that you have uh, safety protocols around that data. And then finally, that you're understanding who's using that data. So applying your role-based access controls that you have in place today and allowing for um, automated, automated provisioning based on those role-based access controls will really scale this environment and make sure that you're applying those security protocols that you already have in place. So Fivetran, if you haven't heard of us yet, I'm surprised. We're used by over 4,000 organizations. Uh, we are the platform for moving data to cloud data warehouses. And you know, while uh, these stats sound great, you know what, you're probably saying, Kelly, uh, uh, I can't take your word for it. Tell me about some customers. Well, I've got some great use cases um, that, that really span the, the uh, paradigm of the type of things that our customers are doing. So like DocuSign, they had a, a new organization in their marketing team that was applying a new uh, analytics practice. And they went from nothing in the cloud data warehouse to all of their analytics data in almost 20 minutes. They were able to set up the connections and move the data and start their analytics program just that fast. Autodesk, who was replatforming and moving from an on-premise a data warehouse to a cloud-based data warehouse. They didn't want to replicate all that code that they were using to move data into that data warehouse. With Fivetran, we were able to automate that entire process of moving data over there and really reduced their to a fraction of the amount of work that it was taking to maintain those pipelines. Or Old Castle, who was uh, migrating to a modern data stack and, and through this uh, modernization process, they saved almost $25 million in development and IT costs uh, across the organization. So it was just absolutely huge. Ron, I think that's all I've got. So we can open it up for questions.